I joined Twitter 11 years ago when I was still a web designer in 2006. It was, you know, after Facebook, one of the biggest, brightest web companies out there. And, you know, it was, it was, had a lot of growth, quite different, used SMS and, and all of that. And 11 years later, I've now found myself on the tail end of my relationship with that service. It's been a really weird 11 years. And I only say that because if you've been watching these videos over the past couple of years, uh, I had started going to therapy. And uh, although I haven't been able to go recently, that hasn't mean the learning has stopped. Uh, if anything, my therapist, Dr. Saum, did a really good job of instilling me with tools to be able to know when my problem arises. My problem being self-worth, my problem being my, my tendency to devalue myself. And looking through the last 11 years in that lens, Twitter's been akin to an abusive relationship. Not quite Stockholm Syndrome, but pretty close to it. Maybe even at times going in and out of it. The reason I say this, and I'm not saying that Twitter, Twitter is that for everybody. Twitter is a very interesting place now, very, very different for a lot of people, depending on where you are on the spectrum of, of humanity. It's different for a lot of people. But for me, for the, for the old guy in the room that's been using it for that long, uh, from the very beginning, Twitter was this, was this popularity contest. And it was a, who could be the loudest? Who had the loudest microphone? I even wrote a blog post about this on my blog, which was Avalon Star way back in the day, about the volume of people that spoke in, in web design and talking about the, you know, the louder your mic, the more likely you were able to push your ideas about web design forward, whether they, were, whether they worked or not. Now it's just whoever has a lightest microphone is able to have that platform to do whatever they do whatever they please. But that's not the point of this. The point of this is that when I joined into being a popularity contest, it's really interesting if you psychoanalyze or hyperanalyze what you do on Twitter, at least what I do on Twitter on a daily basis. And although I've removed my account on from my phone already, I still have the app. I still open it. It's still muscle memory to do this, but to, to check things like, you know, by like follower numbers or, or the number of likes you have or on a specific tweet or who's corresponding with who. They say on Twitch, you know, to, to never, to never kind of give credence to your follower count, your sub, your subscriber count, you know, uh, your viewer, your concurrent viewer account. And we all like to say that to people. It's like, yeah, what, what's your, what's your, what's your opinion on for new, new uh, broadcasters coming out and trying to make it on Twitch? We always, you know, that, that usually comes up, right? But the, the fact of the matter is, is that we don't not look at it. We look at it. We just ignore it. We devalue it. And, and, uh, you know, that the fact that we devalue it doesn't mean the that importance cannot then resurge if you have a particularly bad day or if you have you know a large sub drop we're human this happens we place importance we place our self worth on these artificial metrics follower count sub count likes retweets and for some of us, some of us, are, and I envy those people, are able to, like, really not care about them. Um, my wife, for instance, is, is really good at, at not valuing herself against these metrics. But me, I, that is me. If you've, again, if you've watched me, if you watched my videos, if you've corresponded with me at all, that is who I am. I am that person. I've grown, I've grown up as that person. And so to be in a situation, to be on a service where that is all it is, and that's all I've made it to be, and I've 
generally now, you know, in, in the last couple of years, learn to ignore things like that doesn't make them doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't eliminate those pieces as a factor. I just don't pay attention to them as much. But those are pieces of straw that build up on on the proverbial camel's back. And today, a piece of straw, the lightest piece of straw, something that would on any other day just just place itself broke the back. And maybe this is I've gotten to a point with my self-worth and with self-respect and confidence because of the community I confide in on a daily basis, a wonderful wife, a wonderful staff at my channel and a wonderful community have now I've now been able I'm now able to see this cycle. And I've been through this before. I've been through this cycle before where I'm like, I'm feeling depressed. I don't like numbers. I, I feel embarrassed. I said something wrong. So, you know, give it a few weeks and you'll come back. But if you look at it from a macro lens, if you look at it from the outside in, it's like, why am I so dependent on this one tool? Why am I so dependent on this one tool to keep correspondence with those people that I care about? Why am I depending on this tool to be my microphone? Why am I depending on this tool to determine my worth as a person? And I need that to stop. I don't know how long I'm going to be off of Twitter, but I needed to take action. And in pure Brian fashion, I did it with, I did it over dramatically, cold turkey, and I like pretty much rage quitted. Uh, that's that's the way that things work for me. And I think if it worked any other way, like I, I wouldn't really be in these problems, right? Like in this in this, you know, predicament right now. Uh, a lot of the times in therapy, it took Dr. Salm to deliver that aha kick in the ass realization to be like, hey, you need to change. That thing right now, boom, mind blown. This is what I needed. And I'm doing it from a place of like a place of strength, because I know if I keep continuing this relationship, I am going to blame people I love for things they never did to me. The things that happen when you're left with you and your phone, the things that you and your phone only know when you're on a service like Twitter. Oh, I don't talk to X so often anymore on Twitter. He doesn't tweet me, but he tweets everybody else. Must not like me anymore. It's not reality. I have one. I had three wonderful teammates on a team we called Sidebar way back in the day. Dan, Snook, and Steve. Love them to death. We had a real life relationship working on amazing things together. And then we lost touch. But never for once did I think by not tweeting them, I lost touch with them. That, that I could not just say, hey, Dan, what's up? I miss you. Like, because we had that foundation in real life. And I had that foundation with a lot of people. And I did them a disservice in my brain by even thinking that for once, they weren't my friend because they weren't talking to me on social media. That's my insecurity. That's in my head. What's causing that? The medium. What do I need to do? You know, find a way to solve. Maybe Twitter, leaving Twitter isn't the way. Maybe I need to evolve a little bit more in order to, in order to consume it again. But for now, this is what I need to do. Because I need to I need to keep growing as a person. My ambition is now on myself and not an achievement of any kind, like getting to a specific sub number or becoming like what I wanted to be when I was younger and be on the cover of a magazine or something like that. It's not that anymore. It's like I want to be better as a person because it's making me happy. And I have a lot of people who are taking stake in that happiness because it gives them that my job now is to help 
people with that. And the happier I can be, the happier I can make them, the happier I can make the people I care about. And it's just breaking this goddamn cycle. The fact that it took me 11 years. It, it, some people probably are in there on Twitter, stuck in a very Stockholm Syndrome like situation. Where they could very well be better off by getting out of it, but can't, and they'd even defend it. I need to get this off my chest. And obviously, this is a longer than usual out with it video because it's. I have been dependent on this for so long. And, and, you know, now that I'm very. This being Twitter, and now that like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to start the process of not using it as my primary form of communication. Actually, I, you know, I posted on Instagram twice, you know, and I've talked to some, I've corresponded with some people, some of my friends on Facebook that I haven't talked with in a while. I mean, social media is social media. That's not the point. The point is that I, I, I saw something that was wrong and I noticed a, a cycle that was self-destructive. And that was Twitter. Twitter was allowing me to be self-destructive. I'm taking a step against it. I'm taking a step to stop it. Because I'm starting to love myself. And I'm not going to let an internet service. For a child of the internet, I'm not going to let an internet service determine. Let me, give me that fuel to belittle myself. Not now. Not when, I'm come, not when I've come so far. In the past couple of years, I've got a long way to go, but this is just one step, and I, I hope it works.